Hello viewers, we welcome you to this Voice of Truth program. We encourage you to join with us for an in-depth Bible study. Our today's lesson will be delivered by Brother J.D. Bates of World Evangelism, also the Associate Editor of the Voice of Truth International Magazine. Come, let us hear the Word of God. We appreciate you taking your time out of your schedule to join us today for a period of Bible study. In today's lesson, I want to look at the first five verses of 1 John chapter 5. And in the first verse of that chapter, we find John saying, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who begotten of him. Notice in this verse that we find a little phrase, born of God. This little phrase, born of God, is used seven times in the book of 1 John. Obviously, that's a very important concept. Now, this phrase means the same thing as being born again, as you find in John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, the Pharisee, who had come to him by night, asking him some questions. And in that conversation, Jesus refers to a spiritual rebirth, in contrast to the physical birth that Nicodemus had in mind. So to be born again simply means or refers to becoming a true Christian. And there Jesus instructs Nicodemus on how to become a Christian. He that is born of water and the Spirit, you can see the kingdom of God. But obviously, if you're not born of water and the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, water refers to the waters of baptism, and to be born by the Spirit means it's a spiritual birth accomplished by the power of God rather than a physical birth. Now, that's what Jesus was referring to, but in 1 John, we find John writing this epistle to Christians. People had already been born again. Therefore, he was not interested in telling them how to become a Christian, but rather he was interested in telling these people how to live like a Christian. In other words, John is saying you need to become what you are. If you are a true Christian, then you need to live like a Christian. And in this verse, he mentions three essential characteristics that a Christian must demonstrate by his life. Those three things are a holy life, a life of love, and a faith in Jesus as the Christ. Obviously, each is very important to the life of a true Christian. But in actuality, all three of these things go together. You cannot really have one without the other. We see this plainly in the next few verses. John first declares that the Christian believes that Jesus is the Christ. Now, the word Christ means the anointed of God. To be anointed signified that Jesus was anointed by God to be both king and priest. King carries the idea of authority, while being a priest carries the idea of a sacrifice and a mediator between God and man. Not only must we believe that Jesus is the Christ in order to be born again, but we must continue to believe that Jesus is the Christ. One of the first false doctrines to be circulated during the early history of the church was the idea that Jesus was God, but that he wasn't really man. In other words, he was really God, but he wasn't fully man because he only took the form of a man, only appeared like a man. Much like the angels appeared like men when they spoke to Abraham about the destructions of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Apparently, John had something like this in mind when he wrote that whoever denies that Jesus is the came in the flesh is not of God, 1 John 4 verse 2. Notice John says, if you deny that Jesus came in the flesh as a man, then you are can, you're not of God. Today, we have people, of course, in both extremes. Some will say he's God, but not man. Others will say he was man, but certainly not God. John said that we must believe both, that Jesus came in the flesh and also that he was the pre-existent Son of God. And yet, in spite of these clear biblical injunctions to believe in Jesus as the Christ and the Son of God, Many people who claim to be Christians do not believe that. They continue to disbelieve many of the facts concerning Christ as taught in the Bible. 
They would deny his virgin birth. Many would deny the basic fundamental facts of Jesus, such as his miracles. They might admit that Jesus did some great works, but certainly not miracles as we think about miracles. Many others would also reject the resurrection. And yet, as I said, in spite of these denials, they would still claim to be a Christian because they believed Jesus taught great things or that he was a good man. Well, being a Christian is much more than just thinking that Jesus was a good man. It's much more than thinking Jesus taught some great truths. And it's much more than even trying to obey at least some of those truths. We must believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Believe all everything taught to us about Jesus in the Bible. We believe that he is equal with John, John 5 and verse 18. We must believe that God came in the flesh, just as we are in the flesh. To refuse to believe these basic facts means one is not truly born of God, or even truly being a Christian. Secondly, we see that a mutual consequence of faith is a true love for our brethren. In other words, if we really believe that Jesus is the Christ, then we must also have a loving relationship with the children of God. We cannot love God without also loving his children. As a matter of fact, John even declared that love for our brethren is one way that we can determine if we truly love God. Notice what John says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. You see, if you love God, you're going to love his children as well. We cannot love one without also loving the other. And yet here again, we sadly find a lot of lack of love exempted between brethren. This should not be. We as members of the church should live at peace with heart in harmony with one another. How can we live in a strife with our brethren and live at peace with God? You can't do that, according to John. Furthermore, John writes that we find a Christian must live a holy and pure life. You see, love for God and obedience to his commandments, again, go together. You cannot do one without doing the other. Notice in verse 3, John says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. Again, John says, If you want to know what really love for God means, it means you're going to keep his commandments. Thus we find that if you do not obey Christ, or obey God, you don't really love Christ, love God. And if you love God, you will keep his commandments. There's no way to separate the two as if you can do one without doing the other. Love for God will always be exempted by a life marked by obedience to God's word. And then John completes the circle by saying that faith in Christ allows us to overcome the world. Verse 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Thus, to summarize John's arguments, we find that John declared that one born of God believed that Jesus is the Christ. A Christian naturally loves God and his children. And as a consequence of this love for God, he also lives a holy life. He keeps God's commandments because he has overcome the world which came about because of his faith in Christ. Now I might both point out here that keeping his commandments does not mean that we're going to live a holy and perfectly sinless life. Obviously we will continue to sin. And John even writes in the, earlier in the first chapter that if we could say we have no sin, then we are liars. So we will all continue to sin on occasion, but we will not live a life of sin. In other words, sin and the Christian are incompatible with one another. You cannot live as if they both go together. Our lives will not be characterized by sin. So we must keep ourselves separate from the sin of the world. The faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And again, this is far more than a mere intellectual faith. You see, that's the idea that so many people have, 
They have the idea that faith is merely an intellectual faith. As long as they believe in certain facts about Jesus, then surely they're going to be saved because after all, we're saved by faith. Well, we are saved by faith, but it's not a mere intellectual faith. This faith is a faith that moves you to live a holy life. True faith is always lived out in the life of a Christian. If you do not live your faith, you do not really have faith. Faith is the beginning and the end of our relationship with God. But it is not a faith-only type of faith. Paul expressed a similar sentiment in Galatians 5 and verse 6. He says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Notice Paul said what's really important is faith working through love. Again, faith and love going together, but faith causing you to work. It causes you to do something. Obviously, this is far more than an intellectual faith. It's a faith that causes you to do something, primarily love God and love your fellow man. This morning, then, I ask you, how strong is your faith? You see, it really doesn't matter what you may say about your faith. It doesn't matter what you may think how strong your faith is. It does matter, though, how you live, because that really shows how strong your faith is. You see, being born of God is always characterized by faith in Christ Jesus as the Son of God, holiness, and a life of love. These three things must be exhibited in your life. If one does not exhibit these signs, John declares you're not born of God, and therefore you have no hope of eternal life in heaven. Be sure your life exhibits these characteristics of one born of God. Only you can really answer this question. Now, other people can see the way you live, and they can help you, but they cannot see your heart. So again, I urge you to lift your life. Don't just self-deceive yourselves or give excuses into thinking, that you really are a Christian when you don't live like a Christian. We might fool other people. We can even fool ourselves sometimes. But rest assured, we cannot fool God because God looks at the heart. I plead with you today to look at your life. If your life is not exhibiting these three characteristics of faith in Jesus, a life of holiness, and a life of love, then John says you're not born of God. If you're not born of God, then obviously you have no hope of eternal life. And I urge you today, if you're not exhibiting these characteristics, to begin doing that today. Obviously, the first step is to really being born again, as Jesus talks about in John chapter 3. We must be born of water and the Spirit. And then after that, we then we live a life exhibiting these three characteristics. I hope this is true of your life. And if it's not, resolve today to make sure that it will be exhibited in your life. Thank you for joining us on this period of Bible study. Thank you. Be blessed by studying the Word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsredi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214421. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you. Hello, we are happy to invite you to the Voice of Truth International television program. We are going to study today from the book of Proverbs on the topic of wisdom and the heart. King Solomon received a special gift from God of heaven. To rule and guide the people of Israelite. So we are going to learn from that special man what he received as a special gift, the wisdom. Kindly take your Bible and take a notebook and note down the important points and sit and study and read and share this, what you are learning from the word of God. Wisdom and the heart. Our study of the book of Proverbs, we will examine a topic introduced by 
Solomon in Proverbs 2:2 there Solomon tells his son to apply his heart to understanding so that he will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God the heaven these words tell us that Solomon felt that the seat of understanding was the human heart but what was Solomon's own understanding of heart the heart in the bible the term heart appears in the bible more than 800 times and is mentioned 75 times in proverbs in this lesson we will be see what the bible has to say about the heart especially in the book of proverbs psalm 84 david once asked the question what is man david question had specifically to do with the insignificant of mankind in comparison to the majesty of god why does the great and glorious god of heaven creator of the universe take notice of mere mortal man david question also leads us to inquire about the physical and emotional composition of human being what is man really the ancient model of human composition was suggested by the greek philosopher plato this great thinker divided humans into two parts one body the material part of human being that is visible and perishable and two mind or soul this is the non material part of man that directs the thinking feeling and behavior of the body but cannot be seen it is evident that many creatures such as birds and animals have bodies which can move about they also think and have emotions such as fear many creatures have attitudes such as obedience and anger what distinguishes human being from other creatures that also have bodies and minds the difference has to do with god and his relationship to human beings the human body is like a box perishable and subject to ravages of time yet we expend considerable resources time and effort to maintain this box which will eventually perish important aspect of our person that which is on the inside of the box our spiritual life that is this partly because we can see what is on outside of the body but not what is on the inside the attention to external rituals to the neglect of spiritual purity was seen in the behavior of scribes and pharisees matthew 15:1 to 20 when you have a time kindly take your bible and read jesus commanded them for caring more about outward appearance than the condition of their hearts earlier matthew 15:8 jesus had said of the scribes and pharisees these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me the old testament which emphasizes law and worldly relationships does not fully develop the concept of spirituality in the new testament especially the paul's writings we find the extensive application of spiritual principles such as love grace and mercy as opposed to works of the old testament human beings are said to consist of three areas of consciousness that allow us to be aware of ourselves the world about us and god number 1 we believe in a body which gives us world consciousness we are aware of our surroundings through our sense of touch taste hearing sight and smell 
though our bodies are physically they serve as the temple of the holy spirit in second corinthians 3:16 we have a soul as did lord second peter 2:8 that gives us self consciousness we think plan make decisions express emotions and engage in all of the activities that set us apart from the animal world we have a spirit in fact we are spirit that god consciousness god gave us this potential when he created the first human being genesis 126 hebrews 412 it is evident that the soul and the spirit are two separate entities because they can be divided the three distinct part of man spirit soul and body are mentioned by paul in first thessalonians 5:23 how the heart as described in the bible is involved in our relationship with other people and with god it seems that what we now consider to be the heart as a man is associated with both the soul and spirit regarding heart to understand many languages have expressions that refer to the heart to do something do it half heartedly to lose heart to be heartbroken to find in the heart to do something many modern expressions involving the heart have to do with the human love the jewish view of heart different view of emotions several internal organs were thought to be associated with feelings the heart was the source of will and thought heart were involved with emotions heart was an important source of feeling in old testament scriptures mentions heart in regard to feelings the reference is usually to the emotions the mind and the will that modern readers would associated with the heart in exodus chapter 9 7 pharaoh's heart was hardened so here heart refers to the human will for an example absalom stole the hearts of the men of israel second samuel 15 6 in second samuel 24 10 david's heart condemned him referring to his conscience to guide our thoughts let us examine the statement made by solomon in proverbs 4 20 to 23 my son pay attention to what i say turn your ear to my words do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and help to one's whole body above all else God your heart for everything you do flows from it this verse breaks down readily into three points one God your heart two God your heart above else because out of your heart flow the issues of life three points God your heart God your heart above all else point number three out of your heart flow the issues of life number 1 guard your heart proverbs 18 15 24 1 and 2 we are to guard what enters our heart through discrement and examine what we see hear and read we have to examine what we see hear and read proverbs 23 12 we should accept wise instruction so that we do not come to ruin proverbs 10:8 in colossians 3:1 it says set your hearts on things above jesus gives us some advice in matthew 6:33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you we also must guard what is in our heart by exercising spiritual discipline proverbs 14:33 seeking sound spiritual counsel proverbs 2:1 to 5 we also guard what is in our heart 
if we maintain godly relationships 620 of proverbs we have to guard what comes out of our heart proverbs 212 we never know when we may be tested suddenly proverbs 1618 we should consider that our words and actions will reveal what is in our heart proverbs 623 we must carefully avoid all speech thought and action that are not pleasing god proverbs 2110 we must carefully avoid all speech thought action that are not pleasing to god number 2 guard your heart above all else proverbs 6 20-22 kindly read we are to set values and priorities according to god's word and not to grow discontent if we have a discontent in our life it shows we miss guarding our heart proverbs 5:13 and 14 we should also have pure motives for our behavior proverbs 19:21 number 3 out of your heart flow the issues of life we guard our hearts we control our tongue speaking only what is true and beneficial to others proverbs 15:28 by regulating our longings and desire we keep on the right path 23:19 proverbs our behavior will be godly proverbs 24:1 and 2 at the end ephesians 3:16 we receive strength from god through the holy spirit so that christ may dwell in our hearts through faith scripture tells us that the early believers were one in heart and mind acts 4:32 because they saw god working among them for his glory and furtherance of the gospel of christ thank you for your patience thank you god bless you be blessed by studying the word of god to receive the voice of truth international magazine and to study the bible systematically through our english bible correspondent course kindly write to us our address gracious word po box 15 arsradi madurai 625016 tamil nadu for more details dial 9244204420 9244214421 god bless you the church of christ salutes you மதுரையில் ஜாயின்ட் ரெடி ப்ரொடக்ஷன் அதிநவீன தொழில்நுட்பங்களை கொண்டு ফুল HD 4K வீடியோக்கள் சிறந்த முறையில் குறைவான பட்ஜெட்டில் செய்து தரப்படும் சபை ஞாயிறு ஆராதனை சிறப்பு கூட்டம் பாடல் வாலிபர்கள் சிறுபிள்ளைகளுக்கான குறுபடங்கள் ஆவண படங்கள் இன்டோரியல் அவுட்டோரியல் எடுத்து தரப்படும் உங்கள் சபைக்கும் நிர்மாணங்களுக்கும் விளம்பரங்கள் எடுத்து தரப்படும் வீடியோ மற்றும் ஆடியோ பதிவுகள் தனித்தனியாக எடுக்க வேண்டும் என்று கவலை வேண்டாம் வீடியோ ரெக்கார்டிங் ஆடியோ ரெக்கார்டிங் எடிட்டிங் டப்பிங் போன்ற சேவைகள் அனைத்தும் ஒரே இடத்தில் செய்து தரப்படும் யூடியூப் போன்ற இணையதளங்களிலும் மற்றும் டிவியில் ஒளிபரப்ப தொடர்புக்கு நைன் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் டூ ஃபோர் நைன் ஃபோர் நைன் நைன் சிக்ஸ் எயிட் எயிட் செவன் ஜீரோ 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 ஒன் டூ ந